Okay, I got pro cycling stats open. I got pro cycling open. Okay, so transfers. Barde, Latour, and Vujermos out. And in a lot of classics, guys, uh, Stan Wolf, Bobby Angles, Greg Van Avermaet, obviously. Uh, what kind of caused the change? Why did AG2R change the focus so suddenly? What do you guys think? Um, honestly, I think that we realize unless they have, like with the super teams now, like Ineos and Jumbo, unless they really, really invest in like their mountain train or get an elite uh, GC rider, they're not going to win a Grand Tour. So we evaluated. Yeah, Maybe they don't know what they think. I don't know. Yeah, maybe they've kind of abandoned the <laughs> the idea of going after Grand Tours. I think they were always, I mean, at least for the Close. last decade, uh, thinking a lot about that. But they got a lot of quality riders that can still go for stages like uh, Peters, O'Connor, quality climbers. Um, yeah, but I, I think so too. I think that they, they want wins mainly. And, you know, even in that secondary French calendar, and they still got guys like Cosnefoir and such that can go for the classics, definitely. And uh, they're just going for stage wins in the Grand Tours. Yeah. Uh, too, they are more and more focusing, like a uh, quick step, actually. Huh? Because if yes. you see yes. uh, like, a, like the, the team like a quick step, it's also very difficult for them to win the Grand Tour, but they had the yellow jersey with Philippe. And they have the pink jersey with Almeida for a while. Indeed, that was also that very was, good for publicity. Yeah, so. As a Portuguese, that was, uh, yeah, amazing two weeks. Free, actually, yes, because weeks. all yeah. the way till the end, he just, perfect. <laughs> um, and um, Kosnev Roa, he's, he's been developing a whole lot for the last few seasons. He's still 25. What do you think he can do in this season? Is he is he already a match for the likes of Al Philippe, he or she, or does he still have another year to go, maybe to to really battle it out? I'm a really big fan. Uh, it was he had a really good season last year as well, but for me, he's still just one step behind Al Philippe and Hershey. And even with another year, I don't see him challenging them too. What do you guys think? Uh, personally, you know, it's a, it's a rough call because at first sight, I kind of think maybe he's that little step behind them, you know, but when I look at results, for example, he finished second in Flash Vallon right behind Yershi. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was in uh, Brabant Speed. Okay. I'm not exactly sure how to, <laughs> to pronounce that race, but uh, he was there with both Halle Philippe and Vanderpool. In a, in, a route, in a route that actually had a lot of cobbled sectors and all, where I didn't know that he would thrive. So, um, you know, and the same thing, I think it was in one of the Canadian classics two years ago. He was already there with Philippe attacking and such. So, I don't know. I think, I think that he, he is ready. Maybe he doesn't have the support, obviously, of the Koenig and the Sunwave also have a pretty strong classics team. But if he can have the right day, uh, especially for a classic like uh, Flesh Vallon, where it's all about we, maybe he can win there. I, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. That's a very good point, I think, about Flesh, because it's a very honest race. In the end, they just go very hard on the hill, and then you can see who's yeah. the, the strongest one. He, he was one of the youngest ones uh, in the top 10, I think. If Indeed. you look at the other names, you have Pogacar. But all the other ones are more than 25 acts. Of, of course, you also have Hirschi, 32. Yes, yes. only those uh, two, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, do you think, yes, do you think Hirschi would have rode flesh any different if Alaphilippe was there? I don't think so, because flesh is a very, so to say, closed race. Even though it's pretty hard, I think that the focus every year for the big guys is all about that final, the final climb, final kill meter. And um, if you want to win the race, uh, you pretty much can't race it differently. It's not the same as Liège, not the same as Amstel. So I think that flesh is always going to be uh, that more, exactly, uh, as Thomas said, more honest, 
and the, all about that final climb, all about the explosivity. So I don't think so. I don't think anyone would have raced differently there. The, the interesting about the, the sorry the, the interesting thing about Flash is that uh, the Queen and Quickstep actually tried to win it with Van Sevenhante. He was yes, almost uh, indeed. gone for the victory. So they actually tried to do it another way because I I think they don't have the the power and the team to beat uh, Hirschi and stuff. So yeah, they was, um, tried to win it another way. But uh, it was interesting. We will see uh, in yes. twenty twenty one if. Uh, He's a he's also a big talent. You know, Takanik is so strong that he's not really spoken of much yet. Uh yeah, we'll get there when we get to the Kanik. I think the Kanik just that team deserved like a whole half an hour just to discuss everything that's there. But <laughs> <laughs> um for now, uh yeah, kind of cousin for and then there's the big question, obviously. You know, you got Greg Van Avermaet, you got uh Oliver Nazen, Bob Youngles. And already a strong classics team. I, I consider that this year they already have a very strong block. They have guys like Gougiard, uh, Godon, Duval. They have even more riders now coming in. Can they take a monument? Roubaix, uh, Roubaix Flanders? What do you think? Does Greg Van Avermaet still have it? Can Nizen finally profit from having a second... Uh, a second card in the team, maybe even third with Youngles. Yeah, it's a tough call. Obviously, Greg had a poor season by his standards last year. Um, Olive's always been close. He's always there or thereabouts. Obviously, I'm interested to see how they work together. Obviously, they're really good friends off the bike as well, aren't they? Yes, they're in BMCs now. I reckon, yeah. I reckon Van Avermaet may love it, though. And... Uh, I personally think it's something that can that can work pretty well. Firstly, because they have a they have a good block. Uh, both Nizens are there. I mean, that's that's obvious, but I just forgot to say it, point it out. Uh, I think that uh, Van Avermaet and Nizen are both training partners. They're from both uh, from the same area, and uh, I think they can connect pretty well. Uh, the shame is that none of them, you know, the classics riders now. You got. Like Wood Van Aert, Van Der Poel, they just sprint so damn well that it's uh, it's hard for these guys to take a win because they they really can't go in group. They gotta take a solo win pretty much. Um, you know, if I look at Roubaix, maybe it's a little harder, but uh, in Flanders, you know, I think there's a there's a legitimate chance that they can they can take a win. Seeing how Nizen was riding this year, you know, if Van Avermaet gets his best legs back. I think there's a solid chance there. Yeah, the the best thing will be that they will have the numbers. Huh? If they are up front with Greg yes. and Jungles and Nason, then they can try to do something. Definitely. Uh, I think they will. Yeah, I, they need the numbers, I think. But yeah, they will need it. <laughs> they need someone to go solo from the Atterberg in Flanders and then mm -hmm. just sit on Wout and Matthew and hope that they can figure something out, boy. Yeah. yeah, head to head, I don't see them. It's a hard, but uh, I reckon it's possible. I don't think that they will win a classic, but we will see. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um, okay, what I'm going to wrap sorry, it what up. What about uh, Cosnefoy? Do you think he could do well in Flanders? That's that's pretty much the same question that we had with if Al Philippe could do well in Flanders. And um, before he uh, went over the motorbike, he was doing pretty damn well. So, yeah, maybe. I mean, he did really, really good in Brabant Spin. So if he focuses on that, I think that's the main question because he has the Ardennes right afterwards. So maybe he'll devote that period more for training or racing mass country if it so happens. Uh, but if in a year he focuses on it properly, yeah, I think so. He's, uh, he's really sharp. He's perfect for those, those short climbs, the barracks. And uh, I think he can do very well, actually. I think so too. For, for the Arden, uh, he's he's a good card to play. For the Flanders, I don't know if he will do it. When I think they will try with uh, Greg and uh, Nasen as uh, as leaders, and maybe Stan the Wolf or these kind of guys to yes, support yes. Them. and Bob Youngles. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Arden, yes. Okay. Lastly, in this team, um, a joker for this year. You know, who can who can come out of the shadow? 
you know, you have a lot of young guys that have shown really good legs lately, like uh, Shampoo Sun in the Vuelta. Uh, you've obviously got Nance Peters. Uh, he's, he's not as young, obviously, but he's, he's very talented. He's a brilliant stage hunter. And uh, uh, who in the team can uh, develop more this year? Also counting with lots, other, lots of other names, of course. Uh, I'm really interested to see how Ben O'Connor goes. Saw really? at the Giro this year. He has amazing legs. Indeed. Uh, uh, we haven't seen uh, something so strong from him for some years already. I don't think he's going to develop into a GC guy. However, I think he could be for stage wins. Yeah, it's hard, to, it's hard to know exactly what he'll do. I think he has potential to be a GC rider. Uh, but he needs he needs the form like he's had in this Giro, and that rarely comes about. But I would love to see him. I would love to see him the Giro. Actually, I think that he's it's probably going to be his main goal. What about you, Thomas? I think it will be interesting to see what the sprinters are doing. They have uh, bought uh, Tuzi, and they have bought the Saru. Exactly. Uh, they are not the big sprinters, but I think they they are the guys that can uh, stay in the platform when the race is a bit hard. So maybe they will surprise this year. Exactly. Especially for the French calendar in which they, they focus a lot, really. I, uh, yeah, I think they're going to do very well in there. If the, if the whole calendar goes ahead, of course. You know, that's also a big question. But, um, yeah. Okay, I think that is good for... Uh, AG2R. I think we discussed pretty much everything that there was, you know, in a kind of quick way. But uh, okay, let me let me put here in Astana now. Yeah, sure. Astana. Well, I think there's a, there's more things to debate. Firstly, in the transfers, uh, they lost Superman. They lost Miguel Angel Lopez. There wasn't, you know, this never really came to me. I mean, this year, it seemed like a very active rumor. It seemed like everyone knew it was going to happen. But I reckon it was a perfect team for him, though. Why did he leave? Yeah, that's a tough question. I don't know. Was it, there was rumor that uh, there was funding problems, wasn't there? Perhaps. Because, um, yeah, Astana is a really, you know, it's a team that is always chasing stages in the Grand Tours. And uh, it, it suits, it's a team that's suited also his, his racing style very well. He's very aggressive. Uh, the team usually have riders in the breakaways that could be bridged across also afterwards. I'm not sure if in Movistar they'll have that power. Uh, it also depends on the race that they're at, obviously. Uh, but looking at the transfers, it's really... You know, it, it's surprising. That's what I would say. It's surprising. They, uh, um, they didn't renew with some of the most uh, experienced riders. And they have eight transfers, eight riders coming in. And all of them are just uh, young riders. You know, you've got uh, the guys from NTT, Batistella, Sorrero, and uh, Debod, uh, two Kazakhs, Andrea Piccola from Kolpak, Javier Romo from, uh, well, the under-23 rankings, and Benjamin Perry from Israel which, to be honest, it's a transfer that I was really surprised with. I reckon it's because I still have a new sponsor uh, that is from Canada. I can't confirm this, but I think that's the reason why they got Ben Perry. Uh, they still have their main cards, except for Lopez, though. But I would say a weaker base. Can this have some consequences in their season? So, uh, What do you think... Full sound should do. Do you think he'll get most success in chasing the one day, the age sort of thing, or do you think he should go for GC? Like, for me, he should stay doing the one days. Yeah, he's had like uh, not last year, but the year before. Him and Alaphilippe were head and shoulders above everybody. Yeah, um, I think so too. Uh, I think I read in in a recent interview that he's not going to focus on the Grand Tour GC which I think obviously is a great decision for him because even though he's 35, he's still got a lot of power, but uh, he's more for the classics, yeah. Maybe some some one-week stage races. He's done really well, I reckon, also in the Dauphiné mainly. 
and uh, Pauling, if I'm not mistaken, as well, uh, behind Evan Paul. But I think he's done for Grand Tours. Maybe he can finish in the top 10 or something. Uh, but the classics, especially the Ardennes and the Italian Autumn classics, should be the main goal. Uh, another year is going by, though. Can he, can he still go head-to-head with Alphilippe? I don't think so. I think his time has passed, but we will see, huh? because yeah. he is still strong, obviously, also last year. I think it will be difficult for Fulsang to follow Alaphilippe, and especially guys like Mathieu van der Poel and Aramco yes. Iverpool. I think they, they, they are better now. Definitely. When uh, when I look at Vanderpool, I see the exact opposite of Fuglsang, to be honest. You know, if, if he launches one of those ridiculously aggressive attacks, I think there's just no way that Fuglsang can follow him. He's not explosive enough. Yeah, I think so, too. So, but, uh, yes? Maybe to come back to the G- GC questions about Fuglsang, it could be interesting to see him uh, as a, like a backup uh, leader when Vlasov is the real leader or something, if they can keep Vlasov, that would be interesting. Uh, yes, I was, um, I was also looking at Vlasov. I think he's done, you know, it's, it's hard to know how strong exactly he's going to be in next season. I think for the one-week stage races, he's already completely settled in and uh, one of those big riders that can contest with the, the best in the world. Yeah, that's my opinion, of course. Uh, in the Vuelta, I believe that it was in the first stage uh, in the Basque country that he just he didn't have legs at all. He lost some minutes. Uh, but then throughout the rest of the race, he did, he did really, really good. And uh, in, st- in, in stage 12, actually, uh, he finished runner-up behind Hugh Carty. This was in an angler row. Yeah. Uh, can he can he be already a GC contender? Maybe for the top five next season, uh, perhaps in a Giro or in the Vuelta. Yeah, I agree. Another year, I think. His time trial is going to be a problem for GC, but he's definitely got the climbing legs. For sure. Yeah, I'm hoping he he will target the Giro or the Vuelta, and not the Tour de France. Because the Tour de France will be difficult for his type of a rider. Uh, the, the finish is not really uphill. There's a lot of time trial and the Tour de France. I wouldn't do it. Obviously, for the sponsors, they will try to get him there. But... Yes, yes. I would believe that they would go with Blazov for the Giro. And uh, then in the Tour, they would go with Fuglsang to target stages. And uh, the Zagiri brothers and Lutsenko, perhaps. You know, the usual... I think it's somewhat the usual block, but they wouldn't focus on GC as much. Uh, but the team definitely has a lot of uh, structure to target GC as well. You know, they, they are completely used to riding in front, to pushing on the climbs. You know, they have riders like uh, Luis Leon Sanchez, Manuel Boaro, extremely experienced. Uh, you know, for Sanchez... Maybe I could be wrong, but for example, uh, riders like these, in which you, you'd find more in the team, like uh, Ugo Hall, Merawi Kudos, you know, they're, they're perfect for domestic duties. But without a true leader, I don't think that we'll be seeing a lot of them this year. Yeah, I agree. Sanchez is 37 now as well. He's got to be declining, <laughs> surely. <laughs> I think he's actually ridden well this year. I mean, it, at least in one stage or two, I think I remember seeing him. You know, but looking now at... Yeah, he's, the, he's still the Spanish national champion, though. Even though it was because of uh, Rada's bad luck, I think. He also won a stage in the Volta Murcia. So, yeah, I mean, we pretty much didn't see him this year. But uh, he's still got yeah, some decent legs. Yeah, indeed. He, he was very strong. In the Vuelta, I remember there was one... A breakaway, and he was the last survivor because the peloton was riding so hard. Mm-hmm. But I actually think he could have won that day if the breakaway would have made it. Yeah, uh, for sure, that's the stage that I have in mind, for sure. Uh, um, but he's getting old, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then, Alex Aranguru, what can he do this year? I think he could get a few stages of some grand tours, to be honest. I think so too. 
I see him a lot uh, as I do call rally. You know, thrives in the rain. You know, climbs very well for a sprinter. Uh, but then when it comes to the actual sprints, he, he lacks a bit. But he's not such a big name as Colvarelli or as Sagan was some years ago. So I don't think that it's everyone against him. And he's still new enough, so to say, to, to take advantage of that situation. Yeah, I was really impressed with him last year. His first year at World Tour. He did a good job. Yeah, I reckon in, in his Caja Rural days, he, uh, he was doing really good. He was doing really good. And I think his first season in World Tour level didn't disappoint. Um, there was another rider. Yes, Oscar Rodriguez. Uh, Oscar Rodriguez, however you would say. He, he won a stage in the Vuelta, if I'm not mistaken, in the year before he went to Astana. But since he went to Astana, yeah, just completely disappeared. Uh, I remember seeing him with Fuglsang, if I'm not mistaken, in the Giro. Like, he was Fuglsang's main domestic, pretty much. But not only did I barely see him, as I recall see, uh, hearing Fuglsang say that he wasn't satisfied with the team at all, especially with Rodriguez. Yeah, uh, because it was disappointing. Huh? Uh, yeah. yeah, in the Giro, I, I reckon I they lost... Uh, I think they lost a lot of riders in the Giro. Uh, but sorry, you were saying... I was just saying that I didn't really see him this year, Rodriguez. And I, I, he, he's quite a big name. He had some good results a few yeah. years ago. Yeah, I was, I was expecting a lot from him, uh, to be honest. You know, to be, to be at the level of the Zagiris, at least. I was surprised that I didn't really see him this year. Yeah. I'm looking at the results here. He was top 10 in uh, Volta a la Comunitat Valenciana. Yes. Uh, but maybe he was in the breakaway because I see Sonder Army was eight. So uh, he was in the breakaway there. I don't know. Um, I the penultimate question, uh, Alexei Lutsenko. Okay, so he won a stage in the tour. So I won't trash him because he did do something well. You know, he started off the season really well. He, he did third in Provence and then third in the UAE tour. Uh, but since the lockdown, you know, he won that stage in the tour. But um, completely disappeared from him. You know, he, I didn't even see him throughout the rest of the race. I would say, to be honest, that I was kind of disappointed with his season. After seeing what he did in 2019, what can he do next year? You know, is he, is he going to be a big gun for the classics again? Is he going to be a stage hunter like the Gant? Uh, can he actually still do GC as well uh, as he's done in the previous seasons? Maybe take... Uh, uh, a GC win at World Tour level? Is it possible? Uh, I'm not sure. You look at his attributes and you think he should go well in the hard end. But I don't think he can quite follow the top, the elite guys, maybe like the five or six, Alaphilippe, Berkshire, Van der Poel, Van Aert. He can spin quite well. And he was climbing really well at the Tour de la Provence, uh, up on two when Quintana did that mm -hmm. unbelievable ride. And did he win a stage there as well? Uh, he didn't. He finished second. If I'm not mistaken, it was in Ventura exactly. And then he also finished second in the final stage of the UAE Tour before, you know, the lockdowns and all. Uh, you know, he won uh, a race in the virtual Giro, <laughs> but I won't really consider them, uh, this a real win. But for cycling, is really good, actually having all of these obscure results that you wouldn't find anywhere else, I would reckon. <laughs> um, I think but the interesting thing with Lichenko is his profile is a bit like a Vinokurov in the past. Huh? Yes, he, I he can, he can win these big races like Liège, what uh, Vinokurov once won. And, and also this year is the year of the Olympics. It's quite a hard race. So I wouldn't be surprised if he will be up there in the Olympics. But uh, we will see. <laughs> Yeah, he's a very, he's a very special kind of rider, a bit very like Mo enough. Yeah, he's a, he's a bit like Mohoric. He has so many talents, but he's not specially perfect in one of them or the best in one of them, and then he ends up not having, you know, he's really consistent, uh, but he doesn't. I don't, I don't think that he gets that big when he deserves. 
but he's still 28 though he's still 28 it seems like he's here for ages already but he still has some good years left i would say yeah definitely yeah. Okay. i wouldn't be surprised to see him win this big race like the olympics or liege yes de definitely a favorite for the olympics if he has the best form i would say he can definitely climb very well especially the steep climbs and uh, uh, he's a good rider for those solo moves. He's very powerful, yeah. especially when you compare him to the climbers. Yeah, exactly. And it's also the type of guy, if he goes away, th th they will start to look at each other. If that's the same with Van der Poel or Al Philippe, they will immediately start to ride uh, on the yeah. wheel. But exactly. with Senko, they would, I think they will give him some space and then they might regret it afterwards. It's a, it's a very important in one-day race, is that. You know, reputation... You know, it comes a point where reputation just comes in a way. Uh, Sagan, it's the the main name, actually. Even though he won Rouvet in Flanders, it took him a long time to do it because, um, yeah, just everyone against Sagan. Even though the Koenig was there in power, uh, but in the recent years, the Koenig have just become, you know, everyone against the Koenig. So I reckon that Sagan can can get his freedom. Uh, but yeah, that we'll discuss with Bor. For now, uh, final question. Uh, the same as AG2R, actually. Who can, who can come around Astana this year? Who can really be the biggest surprise? Definitely Bod. The Bod? Yeah, I'll I read him. Um, yes, sir? Sorry, I'll really, I really rate him. Uh, he's still young, he's improving. I I'm excited. Yeah, I um, I also like him to be honest, but I don't know if he still he still has it. But maybe, you know, it's a rider like O'Connor. I remember seeing him once or twice perform really well, but then just completely lose the consistency throughout one or two years. But I think maybe that's something that's happened in and uh, in NTT specifically, because when you look at the rider, for example, like Falgren, who really struggled to get the form. Maybe something wasn't clicking in the team and in Astana it can really come through. Thomas, who do you think that can uh, surprise this year? Oh, it's difficult to choose a name. I will choose two names again. Mm -hmm. I will take uh, Batistella and uh, Tejada, two youngsters who, who have showed some nice uh, stuff in the past and maybe they can take a, a podium somewhere in a big race. We will see. Yeah, I look at Tejada and... Um, it's a. Actually, I haven't noticed him much now. Actually, looking at the roster, but uh, you're completely right. You're, he did really well in Monvantu, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, yeah, Colombian uh, Escarabajo. <laughs> I think he can do very well in those those mountainous days. Uh, as for myself, there's a there's a specific name in here that I really like, which is Fedorov. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, he's 20. He just came in the team. He's one of the new hirings. If I'm not mistaken, he's uh, taken big wins. Yes, it was in the Tour of Langkawi. He won the first stage, if I'm not mistaken, from a breakaway, and then he still finished second in GC. Uh, he won a stage in Rwanda and then also a stage in Skekerland. He's, I think that he's completely unknown in the big scene pretty much, and he can do very well. I think he's going to be a rider like Lutsenko, very similar, big engine. Uh, the other rider that I would say, you know, of course that I agree with Terrada and Batistella, but mainly I would focus in Sobrero, who also came from NTT. Uh, he did really well in the Giro. I was surprised, actually, when uh, he finished in the top 10 in the time trial, and I think he's repeated that again over the race. No, he's finished 11th in the second time trial. Uh, he's Italian. Astana do like their fair share of Italians, and I, I think he really can come through in this team. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a revelation year for him. I hope you're right. Huh? Nice. I hope you're right. There's also, you know, looking at the squad, there's also Yevgeny Gedich, what I'm noticing now. You know, he was the same. Uh two years ago I was touting him as one of possibly the biggest talents coming, but uh completely disappeared since then. Yeah, that's the thing with these guys from Kazakhstan. It's very yeah. difficult to see if they have big legs or not. It's difficult to bet on them. It is, it is. <laughs> Completely agree there.